Well, for some Oklahomans, fresh, healthy food is hard to come by no matter the price. While Oklahoma is an agricultural state, we also have several areas where there is limited access to fresh food. They're called food deserts and they remain a true paradox in this land of plenty. Today, we're going to take a look at one innovative solution, but before we do, here's some background. It's called a food desert, an area, whether rural or urban, where fresh food is simply unavailable. While inconvenient for some, for others, food deserts can contribute to everything from a neighborhood's decline to malnutrition and obesity. Stephen Eberly has been working on the problem for over five years. It's a food desert is a neighborhood where there's literally no place to find real food or whole food. That there are only convenience stores and, and fast food chains. That there is no place to buy a loaf of bread, milk, cheese, meats, dairy, and fresh vegetables. They literally don't exist. Now for many neighborhoods here in Tulsa, finding a local grocery store can be about a 10 mile trip. Not a huge problem if you're driving in a car, but if you're dependent upon public transportation or on foot, it makes finding fresh food virtually impossible. Here in West Tulsa, where windows are replaced with wood and grocery stores are all but non-existent, the blue jackalope serves as sort of a food oasis in what was a food desert. I started observing people in the neighborhood who didn't have access to a supermarket. We lost two major sized supermarkets within a, a 10 minute walk from here over the, over the course of a couple of years. So Scott sparked his entrepreneurial spirit and started the Blue Jackalope, a neighborhood market that's an oasis of fresh food and warm fellowship. When I found out that a lot of my neighbors on food stamps existed off of going to convenience stores for their food source, it really kind of hit home. Scott's managed to turn his store into a one-stop shop for this community. In addition to providing an array of essential groceries and local produce, it's also a deli, a coffee bar, and perhaps best of all, a central hub of social activity. They'll sit down at the table, it's a communal table, and they'll start conversations with people, and then they will do informal networking, and that has gotten people who are underemployed or unemployed in the neighborhood day labor jobs. More than anything, it's just become a place where neighbors are meeting neighbors, whether within our community or, or across the broader scope of, of the city that we live in. Food deserts are not confined to just the inner city. Of Oklahoma's 77 counties, almost half are considered food deserts. All of these here in rural Oklahoma. And of these counties, nine are considered severe food deserts, which means it takes about a 10 mile trip to get to the local grocery store. And many of our rural residents are, uh, are elderly and also uh, lower income and we have higher poverty in rural populations. And transportation becomes a huge issue in rural counties as the distance from the store increases. And so the options that are left are often convenience stores um, or very small uh, grocer uh, type stores that lack selection and also tend to have higher prices. And while long stretches of road are often to blame in rural areas, it's the simple lack of transportation that limits others in Oklahoma City. Within the shadow of the state capitol, Kevin Johnson walks blocks past closed food stores to just pick up a bag of groceries. Well, yeah, they really kind of spread out around here. Ain't too many around here, so you know, not really easy. You have to kind of just go go the ways, whatever. And when on foot, that's not so easy. At the intersection of MLK and 23rd, you can hear the vibrance of the neighborhood. Hometown Market is one of the last grocery stores in this area. Inside, the aisles are bright and the food is fresh. Something store manager Chris Carter says has helped them succeed where others have not. Uh, we, we struggle hard and, and try hard to provide everything we can for a consumer that's looking for whatever product they may be looking for. Um, yes, I think we have a great produce department. Um, I think we have the freshest produce that any money can buy. So, and, and we work hard to do that, very hard. 
Carter says while he's proud of the fresh produce his store offers, he understands why some smaller retailers have abandoned the healthier fare. Ultimately, it's, it's a customer's choice. Um, you could provide them nothing but healthy foods, and that still doesn't mean they're going to buy it. We're killing ourselves in Oklahoma on the dollar menu. That's where we're eating, rich or poor, food stamps or not. We're eating processed food only, and it's killing us. We see children with type 2 diabetes that shouldn't have it at all, but they're obese. They're eating nothing but processed food full of sugars and salts. And, and, and that's the dilemma. A dilemma that Eberly and others believe can be solved by one healthy corner store at a time. Now we've been reporting on food deserts for several years now. And since we shot this story, the Oklahoma legislature passed legislation to allow for low interest loans to entrepreneurs who want to open healthy neighborhood markets in areas without a corner store. Now when we return, we'll visit one such corner grocer that's not on the corner.